smells so good. Spread that all across. Yo, what up guys? It's your boy BP Ham, and today I'm making the viral TikTok sushi bake. I know I'm about probably a year and a half late on this one, but I'm always seeing my friends post it on Instagram and their Snapchat stories, and I really, really want to try it out. So I looked up a bunch of TikTok videos, some recipes online, and kind of pulled bits and pieces of what I liked from each one and made kind of my own version. And the best part is we're going to add raw salmon and avocado on top just to take it up to a whole nother level. So I'm super excited about this one because I love, love, love sushi. I could eat it every day. Um, so let's get started. For this recipe, you're gonna need kosher salt, sugar, sriracha, QP mayo, dried kelp, rice vinegar, sesame oil, furikake, sushi rice or jasmine rice, crab stick, cream cheese, tobiko, seaweed, green onion, and if you want, you can get some sushi grade salmon and avocado to put on top. First order of business for the sushi bake is making the rice. So we're just gonna make some plain old jasmine rice. We're gonna wash it and then cook it up with a secret ingredient, some kelp. Always wash your rice with cold water. We got three cups of rice here. Swish it around, put it between my hands. You guys know how to wash rice, so this will probably be very boring. And then I just use like a strainer to drain it so we don't lose any rice. Do this two or three times. So our secret ingredient here is some kelp that we just rinsed really quickly. And we're just gonna throw that into our sushi rice while it's cooking and it's gonna give an umami flavor to the rice. You don't have to use it, but if you have it, mine as well. So this is our no frills tiger rice cooker and we're going to put in our sushi rice. A lot of Vietnamese people have this rice cooker. Super simple, you just put it down. Click it, let it go. If you have one of those fancy Zerushi or Kuku rice cookers, go ahead and use it. You can use the sushi shedding if you want, but because we are going to be baking this again, I don't really feel it necessary to use those function and it just takes way longer. Now we're gonna cut up our greens. We just got some green onion here. Gonna chop the root off. Put that into a couple inches and then just dice them really quickly. And then just one avocado, we're gonna slice this up. So just put that in half and then pull it apart. There's gonna be a seed inside. Move your hand, just get your knife and stab it and then twist it. It should come out easily. And then just knock this on like the corner of your sink or something and it'll come out, but be careful. Then we're just gonna take this, cut nice slices. So I like to just close it once I'm done because I just like to prep everything first. If air hits the avocado, then it kind of gets brown and not so great looking. So we're just gonna try to um, reduce that. But if you really don't wanna cut your avocado early, you can do it later. Now we're gonna prepare the crab mixture. So we got a pack of crab stick. You can get this at any Asian grocery store, probably the Asian aisle of your store. So just open that up carefully. And then you're just going to take them out. And they come wrapped in these little wrappers, so make sure you take them off. And then we're just gonna put them in here. So this is like a 17 ounce package. A lot of recipes calls for 10 to 14 ounces. So just put as much crab stick as you want. I'm probably gonna put in three fourths of this packet. And when you buy these at the store, it's really just all imitation crab, but there's like different versions like regular crab or king crab, but I prefer the king crab version. It's not too expensive, so just buy one that tastes good. And now you're just gonna shred them up. They really shred pretty easily. Um, it's kind of like a mozzarella, stick, not mozzarella, stick, uh, string cheese. Uh, if I could like give you a texture of it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty fun to peel up and should go pretty quickly. And it's really just a hodgepodge of um, crab stick and 
mayo and sriracha and uh, cream cheese. So you really can't mess it up even if your proportions are wrong. Like the measurements really don't matter too much in this recipe. And even at the end, if it's not creamy enough, QP mayo is so good. You could just like squirt it on top and it'll still be good. You could chop these so that they're smaller pieces, but I kind of like the look of them in the longer strands, more visually appealing to the eye. So once you got that all shredded up, I'm going to add in half of that green onion that we cut before. And then also this is Tobiko. I'm going to put in, I'm going to put about half this packet, which is probably about a fourth of a cup. If you don't like fish eggs, you don't have to put this in, but it gives a nice little crunch. I used to hate these, um, but I've grown to like them as I've gotten older. Then we're going to do half a cup of mayo. QP mayo is the superior mayo. It's Japanese mayo. I think they use more egg yolk, so it's a more richer and darker color than like regular mayo, but it's so good. And we're gonna do half a cup of cream cheese. Um, some people don't like cream cheese, but I love cream cheese. I love Philadelphia rolls. I don't know why, but this is about eight ounces. So that's one cup. So we're gonna use about half of this. Eyeball in this really quickly. If it's more or less, it's fine. It's cream cheese and it's delicious. Some people even add sour cream to this. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but to each their own, you know? Wow, I did this really poorly, but you can do it better. And the last ingredient is sriracha. Um, it's like an Asian hot sauce. If you don't know what sriracha is, you probably live under a rock. So get out and get yourself some. I don't like things too spicy, but however spicy you want it, you put as much as you want. I'll probably put like a couple tablespoons in, just loosely measuring that and then going to mix this up and if you're scared of how spicy it's gonna be you can just put in a little now and then just dip your like seaweed roll in um, spicy mayo um, at the end make sure that that cream cheese is room temperature so you easily can spread it out um, if it's like just out of the fridge there's no way you're gonna be able to like mix it in here like, give that a thorough mix because that cream cheese really does need to get all around there but it's already looking really good. And I'm pretty sure you can eat this cold. All the ingredients are cooked. So if you like cold crab salad, like have at it. This part is optional, but for the rice vinegar, make sure that you put in the rice. I like to cook it all together so that it becomes a syrup and spreads a little easier. Make sure everything's dissolved. You could just toss it in a bowl and toss your rice in it because everything's hot and it's gonna get baked. So it'll probably have the same effect. But I just like to do this because this is normally how I make sushi rice anyway. I have my burner here. I'm going to add uh, one third cup of rice vinegar and it has a very pungent smell. So just be careful if you have roommates or you, you know, don't want to be single. Like don't be cooking this when other people are around. But no, nah, I'm just kidding. But it does have a very strong flavor. I'm going to turn this on low heat, medium low, low, medium low, and then add in some sugar, three tablespoons of sugar. The sugar cuts the acidity of the um, vinegar. And like everything, we're gonna put in some kosher salt. This is gonna be one to two teaspoons. I'm gonna put in one teaspoon. This is a half teaspoon measure. Give that a stir. Maybe turn the heat up just a little. Um, let that all dissolve. You don't want this to go for too long, but you want it to become a syrup consistency and have all that sugar and salt dissolve. As you can see, it's kind of turning syrupy. Probably should take around two to three minutes, um, if that. Usually you want your sushi rice to cool down before you put in the vinegar, but since this is a sushi bake and not really sushi, we're just gonna toss it all in here. Getting that rice vinegar mixture we made and pouring it in here. And then we're gonna mix that up. You wanna use more slicing motions than like vigorous stirring because that breaks the rice. Slicing it gives it um, less of a chance of breaking the rice. course spilling ah hot mm, but good oh you can really taste that kelp i'm um, gonna give it an umami kick all right we got this mixed up and now we're gonna assemble the sushi bake so get yourself a 9 by 13 9 by 9 whatever pan you have the longer it is the shorter it's gonna be the shorter it is the higher it's gonna be doesn't matter it's going in your stomach and it's gonna be delicious just get whatever pan you got 
while you're assembling this, preheat your oven to 450 degrees on the center rack. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna line my pan with sesame oil. It's gonna give it another layer of flavor and gonna help the rice not stick. But if you don't have sesame oil, use vegetable oil or whatever, don't use oil, up to you. So just gonna pour just a little bit of this in there and then just brush it around. If you don't have a pastry brush, use a paper towel. Use what you got, like cooking's fun and delicious. So now we're gonna pour in the rice. Just, ah, just plop that in there. And then spread that out evenly on the bottom. Next, you're gonna put on furikake. I'm just gonna use the leftover ones we have in our apartment. We have a bunch of like half used ones. There's many different flavors that you could try out. Top your rice with the furikake. And because the rice is warm, once it hits, you can kind of get that smell of it. Oh, it smells so good. Cannot wait to eat it. Grab your crab mixture and then put that straight on top. Make sure you get all of that mayo and fish roe. Oh, <laughs> I'm so hungry. And then just spread that all across the top. I probably could have used that whole pack of crab stick if you didn't want to like keep like six or seven bundles. Um, but we use eat your crab stick all the time in like ramen and things like that. If you don't have any other use for it, just put it all in so you don't have any waste. You know what, I have a glass pan I'm gonna use just for you guys, just so you can see the layers. So I'm gonna try to get this into another pan. Probably not the smartest idea, but here, here. Hmm. All right, I got an idea, but not a very good one. If I cut out squares, I could do this. Right? Yes, it works. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I am. So let me just re-oil this pan, stupidly. I like to make things hard for myself, as you can tell. And we're just going to um, place it in there like so. I mean, it's not gonna be too bad. Okay, maybe a little bad. Not the worst thing I've ever done. Mm. Oh, it's pretty good. Ooh, okay. All you doubters out there, I got you. I got you, and we are good to go. I don't know if that was worth it, but for the final touch, we're gonna drizzle some sriracha and QP mayo on top. Give it some nice color, and we'll go this way too. Nice. Stick this in the oven for 10 minutes at 450, or you could broil it. While that's cooking, we got one more surprise. We're going to Top it off at the end with some salmon sashimi. And this you can get at, you know, your local H Mart or your food bazaar or anywhere you can get fresh sushi grade salmon. Do not just go to Walmart and buy salmon. Get sushi grade salmon so your chances of getting sick are less. It's a nice slab of salmon. And I'm not a sushi chef, so please don't judge me for poor cutting skills. Um, but just cut it into strips, half an inch to a quarter inch thick, like so, like this thick, kind of. Or however thick you like it, I mean, you're eating it. You can put in any type of fish that you want, or you could just eat it as it is, because it's just as good. And when you're cutting it, try to make long strokes so you don't risk tearing it. Plate it up, put it in the fridge, don't kind of just leave it out for a long time because it's probably not too great for you. We're done prepping and just waiting for that to finish baking. So it's baking at 450 for about 10 minutes and I turn on the broiler for about two to three minutes so it could get nice and toasty on the top. Now we're ready to finish garnishing and then dig it in. We got that green onion. I'm just gonna garnish on the top of the leftover green onion that we cut. And then the rest of the tobiko, we're just gonna sprinkle on the top and then just sprinkle it on. Oh, it smells so good. Woo! So this is done. We're gonna top it off with the salmon and avocado when we dig in. Let's go! All right, so we're finally ready to taste test. I just scooped some out onto a plate. I mean, look at that. Look at that. It looks super good and I'm really excited to eat it. So what you're gonna do is get some nori sheet and then there are these little sheets of seaweed. So what you're gonna do is get some seaweed paper, grab some of that sushi bake, put that right in the center, put some avocado on top, get yourself a salmon. 
And if you want to be really annoying like I am, just some flaky salt to top it all off. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. It's warm. And then that avocado and salmon to top it off just mm, takes it to a whole nother level. And then if you want, just have some soy sauce on the side. Dip it like a hand roll. Mmm. You guys should definitely try out this one. There's so many different variations you can make. Add tuna, add other kinds of fish, you know, kind of make it your own and it serves a lot. I mean, it makes a whole dish so you can have a party, have it for your family dinner, um, but it's gonna be really, really good. And I do recommend topping it off with like some raw sashimi or something like that. But that's it for today, guys. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Um, give this video a thumbs up and comment below on what you would like me to cook or bake next. Um, until next time, peace.